Hello everyone and welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I am going to show you how to paint Krugras Cruciator for the Night Home faction. Here is the list of colors which I'll be using in this video. I will leave it down in the description below too. I have the body assembled and a torture pole and prime them with Abaddon Black. I used airbrush and I applied it onto the model. If you do not have an airbrush, I recommend to prime it with Chaos Black and with a medium base brush, apply Abaddon Black on the model. I love the hands on the sprues for now. It is quite fragile pieces, so best to keep it safe for the time being. So first I'm going to focus on the ethereal form. I am using Incubi Darkness as a starting color. I am applying it onto the robe, leaving out the most inner part to keep it as dark as possible. And just where the spirit waves are starting, I am making thin outlines where I want the transition to start. Now I'm going to use Iron Rack Skin and with a medium layer brush I start painting the waves and where it is meeting with the Incubi Darkness I am blending the two colors together by making thin lines where the transition are going to be. For that I switch onto a small layer brush just to get more thinner lines. And I am applying it two times on the model due to its consistency of the color and I am looking for an all even coverage on the waves. Now I'm going to use Nighthorn Gloom Technical and I apply it mainly around the transition area. Now obviously I am going over towards the darker area and the brighter area but leaving out the tip of each waves. The main focus is to get a nice smooth transition between the Incubate Darkness and the Iron Rack Skin. As it dries, it might be looking quite uneven, so once it's dry, I'm going back to use Iron Rack Skin. And with a small dry brush, I start dry brushing on some of the areas where the technical might have collected a lot, especially on the flatter areas, and also especially around the brighter parts. And just to make it more even, the tip of each wave. Then I switch onto a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting the sharpest corners of the robe and the wave to get an even better transition between the two base colors. On the darker areas I am doing only a small amount. Now that the lighter area is done, I need to highlight the darker areas. For this I'm using Kabbalite Green. I'm using my small layer brush and I start continuing edge highlighting on the sharpest features on the waves and holes. 
I am blending the iron rock skin together as well. Then I'm going to use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing the upper part of the rope to get those raised surfaces a nice highlight. I also recommend to use a small layer brush afterwards and do an edge highlight on the top rope section just to get a strong highlight finish to it. The blending with the Kabbalite and the Iron Rack turned way too sharp transition on the model. So now I'm going to make a mix of the two colors, a one to one part ratio. And where the two colors meet on the model, I am applying it there. In this way, I have a smooth transition. It is also a great color to do an edge highlighting on the top rope section. Now I'm going to use deep kim flash and first I use a small dry brush and start dry brushing the tip of each waves. Then to get a stronger finish on the waves, I am applying it with a small layer brush on the model. Now to blend it even more together, the whole thing, I am making a mix of Piotan Green and Lamium Medium, a 1 to 5 part ratio. And with a medium wash brush, I am trying to apply an all even on the ethereal form part, where it might start pulling together the paint a lot. I am removing the excess with a clean medium layer brush. I also give plenty of time to dry. Once it's completely dry, I am using Ulthan Grey and with a small layer brush I edge highlight the tip of each wave and I can call the ethereal form done. Now I'm going to move on to the torture arch. I am using dryad bark as a base color and I start base painting the wood part of the arch.
Following it with Nuln Oil Wash, I apply it onto the dried bark painted area. Once the wash is dry, I am going to use Gorthor Brown and first with a medium dry brush, I give an olive and dry brush onto the wood. Then I switch onto a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting all the sharpest features and cracks on the wooden arch. Now I'm going to use Karak Stone and I do a fine edge highlight onto the wooden part, focusing on the sharpest corners and cracks just to pop them out a bit more. I also try to highlight on the flatter areas the raised lines of the wood. And to blend it together, the lighter areas, I use Ethonian Cam Shade Wash. I am applying it all over on the wood to get a cold, aged and worn out look onto the arch. Now I'm going to focus on the copper parts of the arch. I use Warplug Bronze as a base color and with a small layer brush I start base painting them, being careful especially around the already painted wood areas. Once it's done, then I use Balthazar Gold. I use a small dry brush and I start dry brushing all the copper parts. Now to give it a nice worn out look on the copper I use Colia Green Shade Wash and I start applying it onto the copper parts.
Once the wash is completely dry, then I switch back to Balthazar Gold. I use my trusty old brush, like it's small enough, and I start dry brushing the sharpest parts and some of the areas where I want the copper to be more visible. And finishing it with some Psychorex bronze, I use a small layer brush and I do an edge highlight on the sharpest features of each detail. Now I'm going to focus on all the steel details such as the helmet, the chains, the colors, etc. For this I am using Lead Belcher as a base color. I use a small layer brush for the small details and also I am being very careful around the already painted details not to go over. Once all the steel parts are base painted, I am applying Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the details to start giving the old rusted weather look onto the steel. Once the wash is completely dry, I am diluting Dumbul Brown with water, a 1 to 4 part ratio, and with a small layer brush I start applying it into the recesses of each metallic part to get an even darker aged finish on those areas. I am not applying it everywhere, I try to make it as random as it can be, just to make it more immersive. On some of the flatter areas I add a thin layer to it. Once it dries, I am adding a second one, but putting it more towards the center of each splash, that it slowly builds up on the metal, the dirt slash rust.
Now I'm going back to use lead belcher and this time I start layering onto some of the parts just to bring it back a bit more brighter. I am layering towards the sharpest features and leaving out the deep recesses to get a smooth transition. I also edge highlight in some areas just to get an even better result on the areas which I want to highlight after. And as previously mentioned, I am adding a fine highlight to the steel with Stormhole Silver. I add just a touch onto the sharpest features on the top of each chain. And I also base paint all the pegs and nails on the model. I use a small layer brush, but with an extra small artificer brush is a bit safer if you are not so sure with the little details. Now I can move on to the ghostly skin. I use Ironrack skin as a base color for the skin. I still do not have the arms glued to the mini just to have the base color applied easier, especially onto the head. And I use a medium layer brush for this. Afterwards, onto the smaller detail, especially around the head, I use a small layer brush. So as you can see, I glued the arms together and I also painted the chains in the exact same way as the steel parts. I also base paint the skull and the smoke with iron rack skin. And once the paint is dry, I am going to glue it onto the miniature. I am going to make a mix of Dragon of Nightshade and Lamium Medium, I want to free part ratio and I start applying it only on the skin, leaving out the skull and the smoke.
Once it's dry, I apply a second layer, but mainly on the top arm section, where the arms are meeting with the rope, and also on the hands, and around the head as well. Now I'm going to use Draco Nightshade Wash only and with a small layer brush I start applying it only on the hands and fingers up until the mid lower arm section. I give it time to try. Then I apply a second layer, but mainly just on the hands and the fingers to get a nice ice-cold hand look. Once it's completely dry, I am going back to use Ironrack Skin. I use my trusty old brush and I do a dry brushing, especially on the lower arm to fade out a bit more the transition. And I do a very gentle on the hands just to pick out the details on the fingers. Then I switch to a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting the details on the hands to get more definition and attention on the hands. Now I'm going to make a mix of iron and skin and deep kim flesh, one to one part ratio, just to brighten up a bit more the iron rock skin. Gives a nice smoother transition and I start layering on the top raised surfaces on the hands, especially around the elbow. And I also start picking out the face details as well. Now I'm just using only deep kin flesh and with a small layer brush I start to make a fine edge highlight on the face and I also base paint the teeth. And with Abaddon Black, I base paint all the nails on the hands. Now I can focus on the death magic and also the other small details. First I use Agrax Earthshade Wash. And I start applying it onto the skull, which I 
repainted with Irex skin. Following it with Kerber Crimson Wash, I use a small layer brush and I start applying it onto the top part of the smoke, fading it out a little bit over the halfway. I also apply it on the tools which are hanging on its back, but I apply it randomly and unevenly. This is going to be good for the blood effect which will be shown later on in this video. Now I'm going to add some Seraphim sepia wash on the bottom part of the smoke and just going a little bit over towards the Kerber Crimson washed area to blend the two wash together. Now I'm going back to use Iron Rex Skin and again with my trusty old brush I do dry brushing on the skull and also the bottom part of the smoke then with screaming skull I do a fine edge highlight on the skull and also the bottom part of the smoke. And to blend the whole smoke effect together, I make a glaze using Flash Kits Yellow and Lamium Medium and 1 to 9 part ratio. I use a small layer brush and I start applying it onto the smoke and just a little bit towards the skull so that the whole piece is blended together. Now I'm going to make a mix of Blood for the Blood God and Rhinox Hide, a 1 to 1 part ratio. I use a small layer brush and I start applying it on the previously washed area on the tools with Kerber Crimson Wash. Just a little splonges and splash effects so to get a nice dried blood effect on the tools. Now I'm going to use Mornfang Brown. I use a small layer brush and I start base painting the tools handles. Then I apply Noon Oil Wash onto the Mornfang Brown painted areas.
Once the wash is completely dry, I use Karak Stone and with a small layer brush, I do an edge highlighting on each of the tool's handles. Now I can do the basing for the model. First I use Astro Granite Texture Paint and I start adding it onto the surface of the base, leaving out the other unpainted details on the model. After a long wait for drying the texture, I am going to use Mechanica Standard Grey and I start base painting the rocks and also the gravestone. Now I'm going to use Noon Oil Wash and I start applying it onto the Astro Granite Texture Paint on the base. Now I'm going to use Mechanica Standard Grey and with a small dry brush, I start dry brushing the surface of the base. Following it with a lighter dry brushing of Dawn Stone. Now I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade Wash and I apply it on the stones and also on the gravestone. Once it's dry, I use a Thonian Camo Shade and I start applying it randomly onto the gravestone to get a little bit more moldy look. Now I'm going to use Karak Stone and with my trusty old brush I add a quick dry brushing onto the stones. Now I'm going to use Nighthorn Gloom and I use a small layer brush and I just add it onto the recesses where the stone and the actual 
spiritual body is meeting just to give it a bit more of the feeling that it is an actual spiritual form not a physical to use dawn stone and with a small dry brush I start dry brushing the gravestone and with administratum gray I use a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting the gravestone. As for the skull, I use Morgus Bone as a base color. With a medium layer brush, I quickly base paint the skull. Then I add Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the skull. Once it's dry, I'm going back to use Morgus Bone. I use a small layer brush and I start layering the skull. And with Screaming Skull, I quickly base paint the teeth of the skull and I also do an edge highlight just on the sharpest features. I paint the rim of the base with Abaddon Black and I add some more time turf on the surface of the base and my Cruel Grass Cruciator is ready to torture the soul out of the living enemies. If you enjoyed watching this video tutorial, subscribe to my channel, leave a like if you found useful tips for your painting hobby and hit the bell button if you wish to be notified about future video tutorial contents. Thanks for watching, cheers!